Chicago, like most big cities, has its fair share of unsolved crime. And in most of these cases, somebody saw or heard something. It could be a suspicious person, a car driving away from the scene, or simply overhearing somebody talking about the case. With your help, we can put these criminals behind bars where they belong. Here in Chicago, we have too many unsolved murders. We need your help. In these cases, the police department is only as strong as the citizens that get involved. Oftentimes, all the detectives need is a tip, a start. Somebody to call in and say, I saw something. Any little information that you know can be the impetus to solve the entire case. Alex was a typical 13-year-old girl, uh, very loving, very compassionate. She loved her family. She had uh, two sisters who were six-year-old twins. She kind of was a mother figure to them. Alex loved sports. My daughter, Selena, uh, made me uh, grandmother very young. She was 16 years old, but we welcomed him into our family. Since he was born, he was a very special part of our family. And he was a wonderful uh, child. Uh, he was a good baby, loved uh, family time. Elter, she was just a girl who was just loving life, loved her family, loved just being involved in activities. My two youngest sons were so close to um, his age, they were only a few years older, that they became more like big brothers than uncles. As he grew up, he was just a normal, regular boy. He um, was in karate, Boy Scouts. Um, he played uh, league ball for South Cicero and just hung around with his friends and did family things. Their figure to those. Her. We were always happy to have Mark Anthony around us. Um, he, he'll, he just stopped by for any reason as he got older. Always liked to hang around with his friends, but he made them laugh, and there was always uh, um, the Mark, Mark Anthony show, I call it. <laughs> loving, energetic 13-year-old girl. She had two sisters who were six years old that she was like a mother figure. Mark Anthony was very trusting, sometimes um, a little bit too trusting. Um, he thought everybody was his friends, and they, of course, uh, with his uh, personality and um, the type of, you know, he was a little bit clownish at times. And so people loved to hang around with him. It always had a smile on their face and it's just so tragic and unimaginable. And uh, he loved being a big brother to them. Yeah, he, he really played the role. He kept them in line. Usually Mark trying to, to uh, correct them, school them in certain ways and certain things, but um, he never let anybody bother them. He'd come to their rescue or came come to their aid. And uh, of course, Sonia, she was um, the favored one because she was the only girl. So he was very overprotective with her as well. And I think that comes with his um, uncles being that way with him when he was smaller. Mark used to come to my house and he used to visit me. Um, just thought he could come anytime. I remember one time he was he came to my house and I, I asked him, why are you out so late? And he said, well, I'm on my way home, Graham. It's like midnight and I'm ready to go to sleep because I had to work the next day. And he said, could you make me some oh, spaghetti and meatballs? And I'm like, you want me to start cooking at 12 o'clock at night? <laughs> I miss those things and the little um, talks that we had. And I was very close to him. Yeah. Alex was a f In his young life, he started um, doing rap songs. He actually um, 
put one together and we did have um, a copy of it. And he did quite well, let me tell you. He, the boy had, uh, he was very creative and very talented. So I know that uh, when he um, graduated from high school, he wanted to go on to some kind of music career, either producing or in music in some type of way, but he, that's what he wanted to do. And today, he, uh, now he would have been 26 years old, so we don't know what he would have been done, you know, what he would have uh, accomplished at this point. And so a very talented young man was, you know, taken uh, away from us and, and, and probably out of the prime of his life. Alex had so much to look forward to. 13 years old, just loving life, you know, had the whole world in front of her, uh, just coming into her. Start with summary. Okay. Of what happened okay. and how we came, and then whatever questions you got. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't. I don't know. About I don't have that info. Okay. I got. Like you. the like what happened. No. Okay. So this is when we Have you been in an accident? Have you been the victim of discrimination or had your rights violated? Have you been injured? If so, the lawyers at Hale Law would love to talk to you. We offer a free consultation. Call me, Andy Hale, 312-870-6926. 312-870-6926. I look forward to talking with you about your case. Someone in the area saw something, telephone him. It's been 11 years. If you want to remain anonymous, you can do so. Give, give us your information. That's what we here. Because there's probably more people out there who saw something and just don't realize it. The day before, he had called to either ask if my son was around, Uncle Eddie, he wanted to ask for, and um, I told him he wasn't. Ask him how he was doing and what he was gonna be doing. He said, oh, well, I'm gonna go visit my friends in Cicero. And I'm like, okay, be careful, I'll, I love you. And that's pretty much the way it went. He decided to go to the store that was at the corner of 30th and um, Laramie. Disappearance and murder of 13-year-old Alexandra Anaya. Alex was last seen by her mom in the early morning hours of August 13, 2005 at their home. In and when he was leaving to go back, that's when he was gunned down. Police detectives. This squad will offer a fresh perspective on violent crimes such as this one. For the public to look on the internet and read stories about the death of a 13 year old girl and switch to the next story. But it there was mention of a car that was sitting in the alley. I don't know if they had, you know, been waiting there for Mark or they, they you know, they, they followed him. Up to the river and walking over that railroad bridge over, over the little county river. Three days later, Corso was seen floating in the Little Calumet River in Chicago, Illinois by boaters. That torso The FBI continues to seek information in regards to the disappearance and murder of 
13-year-old Alexandra and I. Alexandra was last seen by her mom in the early morning hours of August 13, 2005 at her home in Hammond, Indiana. Arms and legs had been cleanly severed from the torso. That torso turned out to be Alex. My mother liked to drink green beer on St. Patrick's Day, so I took her out. And she was 83 years old, so anything that made her happy, I did. And the police were just completely baffled and shocked by the nature of the crime. I mean, who would? And then I uh, received a phone call from my daughter, and she had told me, Mark, Mark was shot. I hurriedly and gathered the things um, and took my mother home and um, I was on my way to the hospital. Nothing could have prepared me that when I walk in that Mark had already passed away. When I got there, um, and it seemed like an eternity. I seen the police officers. I, I just don't remember their faces. They wouldn't uh, let, you know, very many people, but I was one of them, and they let me go in there and um, I remember kissing Mark on the forehead and saying goodbye to him. I don't even remember how I got home. I don't even remember anything past that time. I talked to the chaplain and I remember saying, my last act of love and loyalty for Mark is to find uh, justice in his death. Your old innocent girl. You know, what would be the motive for that? The police were just completely stumped and had... Someone in the area saw something. Telephone. It's been 11 years. If you want to remain anonymous, you can do so. Give us a call. Give us your information. That's what we want to hear. Because there's probably more people out there who saw something and just don't realize it. Or telephone us at the FBI. 312-421 six seven zero zero it makes me angry because I'm quite sure it was for something that was so uh, petty so minute because that's the uh, the mindset of the you know the gang bangers and the, the people they have no respect for for human life ten years is a long time to be without your loved one or you know any uh, type of justice. I thought about it every day. I feel empty. I feel, you know, sad. Not only was he my uh, my grandson, but he was also my godson. They had baptized him, held him, and gave him, you know, gave his his life to, you know, to uh, God, and um, made sure that he he lived that life. I even thought about um, if there was a trial and what I would say face to face, what I would say to to the person who took my grandson's life. Provide a fresh grip when a violent crime happened to Alex and others like it. It is the FBI's belief that no stranger committed this crime. This task force will not stop, continue this investigation until the person responsible is brought to justice for this crime. Side Initiative Task Force is a dedicated task force that began in the year 2016 and it contains efforts to this investigation to find those responsible for the death of Alexandra. So we're on location where uh, Mark and his friend had exited the supermarket right across the street behind me. They exited the store, walked across to the street, and continued to walk westbound from that location when he was encountered by a gunman. This street is normally pretty quiet. It's a residential street marked by four-way intersection. However, 10 years ago, it was uh, laden with gang crime activity, multiple shootings and different disturbances uh, of the like. He was encountered by a gunman at the very location where I'm standing. Um, after several shots rung out, the gunman fled from this location, and then Mark continued, again, walking down westbound from this location where he succumbed to his injuries. So. And then what, what, what did you Uh, Alexandra went missing from her home in August, morning of August 13, 2005. And you remember this. I have Alex, uh, 
seeking information poster right outside of our media office to remind us every day that's the person we go we try to get justice for. One thing, like I said, to, to look at a, a my mother was consumed with uh, grief herself. It was very hard for me because um, nine months after Mark passed away, my mom died. When there's um, anniversaries like his birthday or the anniversary of his death, what they choose to do to tr you know to try to uh, get through it is they um, they celebrate his life. And we go around and um, everybody has to say something funny that Mark did to them or how they touched his life. And we end up going around two or three times because he was such a funny person, you know. And um, I think that's how they get through them. Because otherwise it would be too, too hard to bear, especially for children. I suffered uh, quite a while, but if I didn't pick myself up and keep on moving forward, I couldn't help my other grandchildren. And they suffered enough themselves, you know, to lose their brother. And they seem to have gotten, you know, come along pretty well. I mean, they're, they're all, you know, doing well in school. And I'm quite sure that deep in their heart, even though they're frightened because nobody wants to sit in a courtroom and go through all that and relive it all. But I think in their hearts, they really want the, the person to uh, be brought to justice. Have you been in an accident? Have you been the victim of discrimination or had your rights violated? Have you been injured? If so, the lawyers at Hale Law would love to talk to you. We offer a free consultation. Call me, Andy Hale, 312-870-6926. 312-870-6926. I look forward to talking with you about your case. Someone in the area saw something. Telephone. It's been 11 years. If you want to remain anonymous, you can do so. Give us, give us your information. That's what we want to hear. Because there's probably more people out there who saw something and just don't realize it. At the FBI, 312-421-6700. You know, we couldn't put it all together without the, uh, the fabulous work of the Cicero Police Department and the, uh, Jerry Shalada and the uh, the people from Ceasefire, they help us all the time, whether it's a, a march, a vigil, um, passing flyers, they're always there with us. I'm always looking for ways or to, to, you know, to get the, the, the word out, the message out. I have still went back uh, years later and talked to people and you know, say what they have to say. The detectives sometimes, um, stories come up and people you know, say things like that and whatever information we get, we pass along. Because even if it seems insignificant to us, uh, who knows? You know, crimes have been solved on lesser things. How small you think your information may be, give us a call. Telephone our FBI Chicago off 312-421-6700. And if you want to remain anonymous, we can do that. We need the public's assistance because we want to bring justice for Al. My first question would probably be why. Not that any answer would be you know, would be appropriate or any answer would, would, would make me feel better. But I also want to add, ask him if he knows what he did to this family. Because the day Mark lost his life, this family was forever changed. The dynamic of it, the, 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 the closeness, I mean, there's a big piece of our hearts that are gone and it, it, it changed us forever. We'll never be the same because we lost one of our or special angel will be retested for information. That's pretty important. And the person at home should know that. The person at home who is responsible for Apple should know. We will not stop. We have new leads coming in, we have tips coming in, and we are conducting new DNA testing. I don't have any information about that. You know, limited information about her easy to remember because it's we advertise on the internet. Whatever little information, Pat, please pass it along. Um, we're hurting. Um, our family needs closure. 
Mark deserves justice. He deserves it. And that's all I ask. I, I beg of you, if you know anything, to please just contact the Cicero Police Department. And earlier that morning, later that night the family had dinner together, and then... During the time when we were passing flyers, we were threatened, we, we, we'd pass off flyers, they'd tear them down, we'd pass off flyers and tear them down, and then I'd walk and people would tell me, get off my block, you know, they, they think they own the block, so... It didn't intimidate me, but I'm just saying, there are a lot of people who are frightened, and you know, they don't want to uh, have their name, and, and, and it's understandable, it really is. So just call anonymously, whatever tip you have, or whatever you, you know, like to share. Say you have information in regards to the Alexandra Anaya investigation, and you'll be directed to the appropriate people here at the FBI Chicago. We want to hear from you. that, but in addition, can I poke the bear a little bit? Yeah. Alex went missing on the morning of August 13, 2000. Who committed this crime? You know you did it. We're going to catch you. You're sitting on your couch watching TV. We will not stop. We have many resources available. We have new DNA testing, and we have an entire squad to getting justice for Alex. So be advised. I never lost hope on this case, and I'm hoping that um, you know somebody will see it and somebody will uh, come forward. And I really do believe in my heart that it can be beneficial. There'll always be um, a ray of hope that that it will be solved because stranger things have happened. It was Alex's torso that had been apparently dumped in the Calumet River? So it was just this shocking, shocking, gruesome case and the police were just baffled by who would want to do something like this to a sweet little loving. The cases featured on tonight's episode remain unsolved and we need your help. If you have any information on tonight's episode or any of the cases featured on the show, please give the detectives a call. We need our communities to come together so we can take back our streets and make our neighborhoods safe again.